The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! This is the Players' Lounge, broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, and Newey Scruggs. Tuesday, Players' Day off, but the Players' Lounge is on. I am Newey Scruggs, joined by two former Dallas Cowboys safeties, Barry Church, Danny McRae. Yes, sir. I was watching Hanging with the Boys. You showed up yeah. in a little Halloween. <laughs> yeah, I had to outfit. let them know. I had to let them know what was going on Looking over here, like man. The Incredibles. Yeah, we had here. we had a little Halloween hit sticks action over there. So I came in as Mr. Incredible. You know, had to come in, flex my muscles on hanging <laughs> with the boys a little bit. I had to let the people know. You know, if you don't want everybody in your background, you don't want producers all in there screaming in your ear, come holler at the players lounge, twelve thirty. So you're you're a fit guy. You know, you can take Whoa. off your shirt and show some muscles. Yeah, I could do that. I could do that. For huh? sure. Why not be Danny? What are you talking about? For Halloween. Survivor. Be Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> he don't have enough hair. <laughs> I ain't got enough hair. I ain't got enough time to be not eating. You go buy that at a store. I ain't got enough time to be not eating. You know, I like I like my poundages. Where let, me, right say, now. let me tell you, I'm the opposite of what I was on that TV show right now. All right. I just now have got, I looked at a picture that I took uh, recently, mm. and uh, it motivated me. All right. So now okay. what I'm doing is, is I'm working out. Back on our Zoom uh, right, quarantine workout, right. I got that picture of me right there, and I'm looking at it and saying, "Printed yeah. that thing out." Yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> no, no more. <laughs> no more. No mas. No mas, man. Danny McCray, you can watch him tomorrow night, seven o'clock on. Survivor, I have my hoodie on too, baby. Team Danny, yes, mm. you can get your Team Danny gear. I've got the Team Danny T-shirt. Church has got some more gear here. Oh yeah. Tell everybody where they get the gear. At, yeah, man. Listen, let me tell you something. Those hoodies are almost sold out. So uh, mm. if you don't so get like them quick, cakes. if you don't get them quick, they will be gone. But. You can go to my website at shopteamdannymerch.com, M-E-R-C-H, and you can check the link in my bio on Instagram, at Danny McCray 40 Grab your gear while you can. It's going to be a big episode this week, New York. I guarantee Huge. it. Right. It's okay. going to be a big forward to episode. It. Hey, retweet the Players Lounge, okay? Go go over to uh, Twitter. It's players underscore lounge. Retweet the Players Lounge. Yes, Get indeed. it out to people here. Mm-hmm. We appreciate that. I, I like to listen to Hanging with the Boys because I, there's always going to be a wild, crazy take on there. What they talking what, about this what, time? Which one was crazy this time? GM Jesse. GM Jesse oh, Holly. Oh, man. And that's the, the name Nate Newton gave him. Mm-hmm. GM Jesse. Said he, gonna tra- he would trade Michael Gallup right now. Uh, that's not that crazy. That's for crazy. If it, it just, what, what, what's he trying to get for it, for him? He, he talked about a corner. That's crazy. And I'm just trying to say, okay, who, who's giving? Who's going to give up a starting corner for a wide receiver who's played one game and you don't know where he is? I mean, I wouldn't do that route. If we're talking picks, though, future yep. draft picks, would you do that? Okay, so here's the next thing we talk about draft. What do you think you're going to get from Michael Gallup? At least I'd try to get a third. Okay. That's pretty high. And and man, I sell for the fourth too. Yeah, okay, okay. yeah. yeah I, man, I'm, I'm, more, I'm more in that range, fourth, fifth. Okay, so here comes the thing. Just put it in the other team's shoes. Are you willing to give up a fourth round pick for a player who can walk at the end of the year, and you may get nothing out of it? You may get a third round pick out of it, a compensatory it, pick, comp- right? You know, yeah, that's why you got to look the, at and it. And you say, and what you do say, you think? Is it going to be a third now, or fourth? Now, if you're the Cowboys, you look at it that way, Chris. But if you're the other yeah, team making yeah. the trade. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you're the other team making the trade, I don't know if I want to do that. If I'm trading for the player, I want the player around. So are you also ready to give him a contract? That's what I'm saying. But yeah, if, if they're if ready. You, you imagine that it, whoever he gets traded to is looking for 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 that, that guy, piece. right? They're yeah. looking for that guy, and yeah. they're like, hey, listen, he's better than what we're probably seeing uh, in college at this point. We can get a guy who's already proven, has experience. Mm-hmm. Then you say, all right, well, this is the guy that's on our board, and we were probably going to go get him anyway after the season or put our bid in, so let's just get him now. Mm-hmm. And we give up that fifth. Look at the, look at the Saints you know, and, and save you some money because all of a sudden somebody somebody start start that price tag up here. Then that team that was looking for him and could have made that trade for him for, for a fifth is looking at paying what 18, 17, great. 18 Great, great. Love where this is going here. So now I throw this out here. Mari Cooper has been battling injuries, mm-hmm. dealing with the ribs for years, dealing with the legs. So are you willing to have Michael Gallup leave? You still got eleven football games left with Amari Cooper, mm-hmm. and hopefully more after that. Yes, You're I'm willing. willing to, I'm willing to do that. Yes, because yeah. we've seen with these guys, we've seen games where Amari Cooper and Ceedee Lamb have combined for eight catches, no okay. yards, and we still put up thirty six points. Okay, so stay with me there. All right. What if the ribs get worse and he's got to miss a game or two? Are you ready to go with Ceedee Lamb, Cedric Wilson, Noah Brown? 
Yes. Yep. Schultz, Schultz, Zeke, Schultz, Pollard. Schultz, Schultz, I mean, Schultz, I, 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 yeah. And I'll say this one thing about Amari Cooper. Uh, the dude has been battling injuries for years, and he's been fighting through them for four years, even to the fact that we didn't even know that he had certain injuries and then he ended up getting surgery after the season. So I think he's going to be able to tough through this season. Hopefully this bye week gave him gave him a chance to get a little bit more healthy, but I think we're going to see a different Amari Cooper wow. moving forward and uh, throughout, throughout the season. He still has the ability to garner double teams to open other people up. I mean, we've seen it time and time again where even if he's battling ribs, got the hamstring, we see their main corner on him with safety help over the top, and that leaves CeeDee Lamb one-on-one. Said Wilson, Schultz, those guys still on one on one. If you if you lose Amari, and he, I mean it's just C.D. Lamb out there, I, I think I think we I think we need to stick with Cooper on this one, and I would let Gallup go. I th- yeah, I'm I'm still I'm, and I'm still okay with I'm not trading with C, with C.D. Lamb being the guy. I like not. N- if if Amari Cooper is hampered, I'm comfortable with C.D. Lamb being able to make the plays that we need at receiver um, when we need them. Because I, if if there if Amari Cooper's hampered, I assume that we're going to be running the ball a little bit more. Hopefully, yeah. we're going to be leaning on Zeke a little bit, a little play action game with Schultz, and then C.D. Lamb make those plays when he needs to, like he did uh, in the last. Is game. there that big of a gap between said Wilson and Michael Gallup? In, my in your opinion, opinion, yes, like it's a huge gap. What about yourself? I think so. There's a huge gap. I think us. I think okay. I think there's a huge gap, but it, but how much do you need these guys in order to be able to win to be right? successful? Right? So yeah. I don't I, I don't think it's is that much to like like we're saying you're not gonna pay Gallup. <laughs> you you rather yeah. just keep Wilson at the end anyway. No so you gotta so, pay so, him too. He's free agent. Yeah, well, he, you're, he not gonna, you're not you're not gonna pay him what yeah, we what we, what we assume that Gallup is yeah. gonna get. Yeah, Without a doubt. Uh, which is unfortunate, man. I hope Gallup is, is you know comes back healthy. He doesn't get traded. I hope that we have Gallup. CD and Amari Cooper taking us into the playoffs for this deep playoff run that I, that I hope that we're going on. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be a scary thing for any defensive coordinator <laughs> when I'm trying to play for Okay, so you guys would trade Michael Gallup. I'm saying I would not. I would keep Michael Gallup and at the end of the year, hope when free agency hits, somebody wants to write him a big check and you can get a third round compensatory pick out of it. That's what I would the do. The context yeah. is trade him if the price is right. Yeah, if it ain't, it ain't giving yeah, yeah. peanuts. Not, I ain't giving him for peanuts. Not for, for peanuts. no cornerback yeah. like Jesse said. Nah. I, I think I think we're doing I think we're doing decent at corner. I think we're continuing to get better at the cornerback position. I don't think we need to go out there and let somebody like Mike, Michael Gallup go for a cornerback. Get something that you need, something that, that is going to help you in the future. And I don't Such think that as? cornerback Picks. Possibly that pick. <laughs> pick. Got to be that. Because look, you, look what we seen, did in the draft. And what what, did, what has corners being traded midseason done so far for other teams? I mean, look at the Panthers. They got a slew of corners that came in there, and they're all performing terrible so far. So I, I just don't think bringing in a corner, oh, that'll automatically solidify our defense. It's just not that much of an impact position to me to so, trade for. So defensive lineman, would you do that? Man, with if, all them guys if coming it, back. If, it, if, if it's the right name, we, we have to, one, because we don't know how Neville Gallimore is. We don't know how Tristan Hill is, how they're yeah, looking, Gator whether they're actually going to come back. The enforcer um, is going to be back. But, but, he might be practicing this week. But, but what I know I is. I believe you call that man the enforcer. What I know is. <laughs> Put a little hockey jersey. I'm taking, I'm taking him to the Stars game. <laughs> Take Tristan Hill to the Stars game. The young goon out here. He's going to get Sagan free. He's taking dudes out. He's going to gator roll on the ice. He better gator roll. No, cool. I, Tr- that. I, didn't, I didn't say anything about you, Tristan. I don't want any issues, okay? I don't want to get gator rolled up on, the on. <laughs> He's the enforcer. But, no, I, I trust Will McClay and those with these picks, man. We've seen how important draft picks are, and you can hit first round all the way through the seventh round if you have the right guys working in that yeah, position. And I that. think – Picks are very important, so I would and, do that before I did a cornerback. Mm. And I look at it this way. Gallup is most likely, in my opinion, going to get you a pick, whether you trade him or he signs as a free agent to get a compensatory right. pick. Because I don't, I don't really something. understand the compensatory thing. So he walks out of here free agent. He's a free agent, whatever. Another team you know, signs him to a big money contract. How do we, how, we get the, we get the concept, uh, whatever to pick for yeah, him? We, we, yeah, we depending get, on how good he does for this other team, is that how that works? Uh, no, it's going to be based on the money, right, Beam? It's, it's usually based on the cash. So basically, if he signs a nice big money deal, you're going to get something back. So okay. like, so like Demarco left, and we got was it like a three, like a three the when thing. Demarco right. left. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wonder how that worked. Okay. So I, I I I go back. We got to, a three from Byron Jones. There you go. Yeah. There you you go. Know? He so got he had eighty something. Yeah. He only got. Right. Yes, yeah, so I mean, we'll go ahead and let him go. 
So you get you with that good six round. You know, Jackson, now Jacksonville will pay Gallup, okay? Jacksonville yeah, they will pay you Gallup yeah. about 90 million. San Francisco <laughs> may do it. San Francisco you know, might do uh, it. The Lions need some help. So, I mean, there's, yeah. there's some teams out there that may write Michael Gallup that $12, 13000000 million check mm. per year, which is what you should hope for the Cowboys if you're a Cowboy fan. Uh, and if they decide they don't want to bring him back, then you should hope that he goes out and gets a nice deal and a compensatory third round pick starts. Coming your way, maybe Baltimore. I mean, who knows? There's, There's a couple teams out there. there. Saints. Right. There's some I mean, teams that could, could, could invest in, in Michael Gallup and, and and do well. But I am of the opinion that I'd like to have Michael Gallup here if I'm the Cowboys. I go back to what Mike McCarthy has said many, many times about how many guys he needed—77 players—to win that World Championship for Green Bay over AT and T Stadium. Did he tell Jalen Smith that? <laughs> just saying. <laughs> I'm just no. This, hey, this is just being real. Like that's we, true, we, we, he said this. We, this is before Jalen Smith was let go. Yeah. We need all these guys. We talked about how much depth we needed at the linebacker spot, they and, and they they let them get uh, okay. get out of here and go can, to Green Bay. Can I give you my opinion on that? Yes, what you, can. you just said. I think that was above the head coach. That came into what was your man up in the business department. Who, uh, who who brought you guys oh, in? Oh, Adam. Adam, yeah, young Adam. Yeah, yeah. You think Adam made that call? Think, Adam, okay, he ain't making no calls now. <laughs> he, he, he suggests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he he making no calls. They, they met together and just said, you know, if he says his wrist hurt or a leg hurt, we on the hook for $9 million next year. Yeah. I mean, we're just smart on the, the part of the Cowboys. Right. I mean, so, they're definitely smart. So if, but he was part of the 77 guys that, uh, that Mike McCarthy said he needed. He was a, he was a, a leader in the locker room. Yeah, and, and you know what? He's right. He'll, yeah. he'll be he'll be one of the 77. <laughs> yeah. he, he still gets, his name is, is still Is he going to get his list. ring? I, I don't know about that. Is, are they going to give him a ring? Yeah, hell, <laughs> <man. laughs> you, know, you know they ain't going to with that ring. Um, I think Edron James got one from the Colts. Think Wait, he wasn't on that no, Super Bowl squad? He wasn't. That was uh, – Joe Duff. That was, that that was, was yeah, that was LSU, baby. Yeah, so – but they gave him a ring. So it's up. It's the discretion of the owner to hand out the ring if he wants. Ain't no way I'm giving out the ring. In, in baseball, if you play one game, you get a ring. I remember when uh, David uh, – Oh, man. He, he's, he does a range – David Murphy. David Murphy got traded from Boston – to the Rangers, he played two or three games for for the Red Sox that year. They ended up winning the World Series. They sent him a ring. There's, mm. Listen, let me tell you, there's a few people who will get a ring before Jalen Smith, okay? And let me name them for you: Jason Witten. Yeah, they slide him one. Des Bryant. They slide. If they do that, they sure about, slide him. They, 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 they talk about just handing out rings. Jalen Smith ain't getting the ring. All right, Jaylen Jaylen Smith, I was joking. He's not getting Jaylen the ring. Was on, ring he was on the team he before ain't getting, games. He, he ain't getting, getting, how, how many snaps? He might have paid thirty percent of the team defensive yeah, snaps. Yeah, he not. He not. Nah, Maybe. no, no, no. Listen, I'm happy for him. Before he's, he left, he, he had more snaps than the late Bennett. He's, yeah, he, uh, not not now though. <laughs> I'm just saying before he left. Not now. He's it was great. a running bet. We were we, in the media. We we were had going. Oh, on. look at y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> look at y'all. Look at y'all over there. I lost. I lost. Calvin Watkins and I lost. We bet on Jalen Smith. We we bet. <laughs> said, I lost. We, it was. Uh, <laughs> we made the bet in the airport going down to Tampa. It's Todd Archer, David Moore. And then Calvin Watkins and I, and we made a bet on who would have more snaps during the year. Jalen Smith or Leighton Vanderesh. Calvin and I both said Jalen, and then more. This was time. after y'all saw what Parsons was able to do out there? No, it was before the first Oh, it was game. before. Okay. Okay. We were flying to Tampa. Flying right. to Tampa. And uh, yeah, so Archer and Moore said, said Leighton Vanderesh. And then uh, Moore said, split right along racial line. <laughs> that would have been right. So it was a ten dollar bet. It was a ten dollar bet, and then he got. They let him go, mm-hmm. and so I whipped. I, I pulled ten dollars out to pay Todd, and Todd said, "No, no, it's not. We've got to make sure Van Der Esch plays and surpasses the number." Of, he got. Of, of Jalen, and so yeah, so I still got to see those. Y'all would have been right tw- too. It's bucks. just my man. They gave him an opportunity. They so, gave him an opportunity to go and, out there and, and start. Based, and, you know, based on that, did. based on that, <laughs> the man helped him win some games. If they win a Super Bowl, I do believe they would give Jalen. Hey, no. <laughs> That man was gone before the bye week. Ain't what, no way. You want to bet ten dollars? That's gonna make it twenty. You you make it? <laughs> well, I'll take that bet real quick. Let's take a break. Uh, <laughs> take a bet. Take a break. <laughs> Let's take a break. Oh man. Dak Prescott. What? What if the what if game has been been talked about, bandied about with the calf injury? So Your what boy, if? Cooper Rush. What if? Let's dive into that next. Danny McRae, Barry Church, Newey Scruggs. Players' Lounge brought to you by Hotels.com right here on Dallas. Cowboys.com radio.
Honey, big news. Gary, are you okay? Oh, I'm not Gary anymore. I'm Jackie Flash. What? See, I want the latest smartphone, but the best deals are only for new customers. So to get a new customer deal, I changed my name to Jackie Flash. Okay, but the best smartphone deals at AT&T are for everyone, new and existing customers. That's huge. Then guess who's getting a deal? Is it Jackie Flash? Jackie Flash. It's not complicated. At AT&T, our best smartphone deals are for everyone. Restrictions apply. Visit att.com for details. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yokiero, Yokiero guacamole. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now, the lucky grease-stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Back, back to the back. Players' Lounge. If your idea of a perfect Thanksgiving feast isn't spent around a dinner table, but instead in a private suite at the Dallas Cowboys Thanksgiving Day game with 17 of your closest family and friends, then Hotels.com and the Dallas Cowboys coincidentally created the ultimate grand prize for you. Head to DallasCowboys.com slash hotels for a chance to win a private suite free night hotel stay, transportation to and from the game on a private Cowboys bus, mm, okay. a $1,000 gift card to Hotels.com with one year of gold loyalty status, all courtesy of Hotels.com. Go enter at DallasCowboys.com slash hotels to have the sweetest Thanksgiving ever. I, 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 just, that, en- I just entered. You just entered that? I might yeah. have to, man. I'll just enter. Y'all let me know if I'm eligible, okay? You know, Hotels.com I, I, will hook you up. I, I entered under my daughter's name. <laughs> 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 Got her social security number. <laughs> they will hook you up. <laughs> Hotels.com yeah. gets you right, man. Call Zoe. Call Zoe. She goes, she's a little win. Get you that gold status. Players Lounge brought to you by Hotels.com. The ultimate survivor, Danny McCray, is here. Make sure you're watching Survivor tomorrow at 7 o'clock on CBS. And we got uh, Barry Church, who people can see your 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 stuff right there oh, yeah, on camera. Yeah. You know? Check him out. Superless. Man. Let me tell you something. Superman never. Check me out, man. He never would have got your caught Halloween with his costume. with his suits in right there. That ain't man. Just so you know. That, <laughs> I know that is. That ain't yeah, man. You know Marvel movie like that, man. You got to be in character. Just, you should have kept it on for the but show. At least the, was he bald? No, no, he, he was movie? fading up top a little bit. Fading he was fading up top okay. a little bit. So I just made him look better. You need to be like a ball superhero, bro. I need oh, Froze on. If I had Froze on, which was in the same movie, <laughs> okay. Samuel L. Jackson, I could have okay. been him. You know what I mean? Why you picking Holla him? at me, Pixar. Holla <laughs> at me. I got you. You want to do voiceovers? Voiceovers, whatever you need. I got it. Multi-talented. <laughs> All right, Dak Prescott. Calf. Dealing with a calf injury. Players are off today. There was a debate about, hey, Jerry, uh, do you play him? Or do you make sure you're looking towards the next 10 games after yeah. this? Yeah. What would you do? I, Sunday listen, at Minnesota. But the unfortunate part is I have to speak about this not knowing how bad the injury is or how it's healed up over the week. Mm-hmm. But I will say this. If you feel anything, if you feel anything in that calf, kind of like how they, they set him out uh, when he had the shoulder he had strain, the shoulder a little bit, yeah. I'm being very cautious with this guy, all right, um, because – we saw last year we yeah. were already a bad team, and we became one of the worst teams when we lost Dak Prescott. Historically bad. We're a good team now. We will become a bad team without Dak Prescott if we lose him for an extended period of time. I would rather 
give a game up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know we, we, we don't plan on losing even though Cooper Rush comes in, but I'd rather be cautious with him so we can make sure that he's healthy as we make this, especially this tough division run that we mm-hmm. got at the end of the season where it's four out of five division games. So I, I'd be really, really cautious with him. I, I'm with you on that. I'd be extremely cautious, especially with an injury like a calf. I mean, it's kind of a calf and hamstring. And they are tricky things to deal with because it's not like he can go out there and just let's test his calf muscle. Let's go run, you know, see what you got. Because if he pops it in practice, then he's out for a prolonged period of time. And we know how that works when we got backup quarterbacks in here. Nothing against Cooper Rush, but he's just not that guy. So with Dak Prescott, for me, I'm being extremely cautious. I'm checking with him every day, every couple of days. Man, what's going on? You all right? Is everything all right? Because if it's not, this division is over with, in my opinion. Like, this division is done for. No. As should, long it, as we it, got, it, it should be. It should, as long as it we got a healthy be. Dak. If we got if we got a healthy Dak, this division is over with. So, if it's me and Dak saying, ah, I feel it a little bit, you know, but I can go. I can go. You know, he's trying to be that warrior guy. I'm going to go ahead and sit him down for an extra week. I'm going to go ahead and look, man. We got, we got room in this division. We got room. Have Cooper, Cup, Cup, Cooper Rush come up in here. Maybe get a win, maybe not. We'll see what happens. But we got room enough in this division. And the division's trash. Let's just call it spade a spade. <laughs> the division is trash. I don't see any of those guys catching up. So why not? If he's still feeling it a little bit, why not give him an extra week off if, and come back the next week? If if it was double G, would you feel more comfortable? If it was double G, you already know. You already know. But I'm still, still, I just want to see if you were still I'm still not saying we're going to win with double G. I just want to see if you were still on it. I'm not going to say we're going to win with double G. I'm not and I still think he's a better option than Rush, but that's a that's a story for another day. <laughs> if it's Dak Prescott, uh, I'm resting him a but, little but, bit. But but the truth if is, he's feeling bad. But if the truth is, bad. Dak is playing on Sunday. I know. I just wouldn't <laughs> let him warrior it though. Like you got to be able to sense that. Like if he's over there, like oh no, I'm good. I got this. But you notice he's you know kind of touching it every now and then, kind of feeling it. Maybe got a little limp in there. I wouldn't let him go out there and warrior it. I mean, it's just not worth it this early so, in the season. All right. So looking here at the schedule. A double G would have got that dub, too, by the way. After the Vikings, it's a home game against Denver. Home game against the Falcons. Road game against the Chiefs. They'll be favored in all those games. Yeah. All those football games. Not without Dak. Okay. Fair point. Fair yeah. point. Oh, I thought that's so, what you were getting at. My I'm, bad. I'm, I thought just, that's what you were getting at. I'm just laying out just, just where, where, okay, right, what's left. You. That's all. You. Just laying out just what's what's left here. Um, looking at the schedule. Cowboys are a two-and-a-half point favorite in Minnesota. Uh, you said Pat Peterson. Who sent me the text? Pat Peterson's out yeah. today uh, for, right. for Minnesota. So. Ooh. They was, and their defense ain't it ain't that you know it ain't what it, it, used, ain't, to it, ain't what it used to be. It they got a nice front seven, but the secondary is not playing well. It's not what it used to be. Well, listen, I know we we're gonna put up points on these dudes anyways. This just makes it a little bit easier uh, for our receivers to get open. Yes. Um and 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 that's great for us, <laughs> especially <laughs> if we have a hamper quarterback, which I hope we don't. But listen, I will take any chip that falls in favor of us for us to get any win this season. If that's what it takes for us to get the win. I'll take it. Hope Pat Peterson uh, gets better soon and all that stuff. But listen, that's that's an advantage for 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 the Cowboys. If you're Pat Peterson, how much does it hurt you that your team, your old team, where you you cut your teeth, made mm. your name, is playing so well? Mm. As a, as a former player, how how, how, do, how you guys? Look? I know the feeling. Don't want to say my boy. You know? <laughs> Happened to me twice. <laughs> <laughs> Happened to me twice. I went up there to Chicago. Went up there. We went five and eleven. We played these guys, and I'm gonna out there on a kickoff return because we did so many kickoff returns yeah, that game because we was getting scored on that like crazy. That, yeah. And I'm just looking at the other side like, this is the wrong choice. <laughs> <laughs> This is a bad. This is a bad decision. <laughs> this, is a, this is a bad decision. You know, and it was unfortunate. And it sucked, but you know, like it, it happens. Though it happens. So what, what Pat knows is he's making ten mil this year. So man, he's, he's, he's good. Like, he's all right, and he's still in the, in the hunt uh, in the NFC to to still make the playoffs and be better than he was in Arizona when 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 they were playing with Kyler Murray's first two years. So yeah. he's all right. Yeah, I mean, it, I, man, I was fortunate enough that when I went to Jacks that year, we, we was we was nice that year, and the Cowboys was trash. But the very next year, they beat the brakes off of us in in Dallas, and I think the Cowboys went to the playoffs that year. I think it was eighteen. They went to the playoffs, so I was definitely kind of salty, you know. But I, but you know, in the long stretch of things, I definitely had the bad, so it didn't you know you know it didn't kill me inside. But you definitely get a little salty, like man, them boys are still nice without me, man. But you got you know. but you got further with the Jazz than you ever got with the Cowboys. That is true. You were thirty minutes away from yeah. Football. So I mean, yeah. and in a very very good game, you yeah. know what I'm saying. So, so, like, like, yeah. Yeah, so that's true. That's true, but. 
You was kind of salty though. You ain't listen. You didn't listen. I I went to Chicago five and eleven. My last year, we went four. Was a four and twelve, and then all of a sudden, twenty sixteen, uh, uh, hell of a year for the Cowboys. All right, and I'm and I, this is the, this is the first year where I'm actually watching it on TV, not being involved in any football. And I'm just like, ain't this a? It hurts. Yeah, it definitely oh, hurts, man. man. It hurts, man. So mad at JG at that. I said, bro, you could have called me back one more time. Yeah, yeah, well, just bring right. it back. You probably could have brought it back one <laughs> and, time. And, and, for, and Pat Peterson got booed. He got booed when, yeah, he, uh, when he went to Arizona. Oh, yeah. Game two, he got booed because mm. he said and I get the people got got all jealous because I guess he said, you know, hey, look, I got this circled on the calendar. It was a game that uh, the Cardinals won by a point, 34-33. So, yeah, okay. So, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Hey, let's um, we'll transition into this. Because you guys are former players, mm-hmm. and we've had we, we've we've had a little fun at Lyle Collins' expense. <laughs> He's coming back. LSU's on. Yeah, yeah, I'm still. He's Yesterday still was a media opportunity. They didn't bring Collins out. There's a media opportunity to talk to the players Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you're Collins, and PR Maven Rich Dalrymple comes to you, says, "Look, media wants to talk to you," because they do. Do you talk? After coming back on the suspension and dealing with the whole I would. allegations of bribery and having the lawsuit. Would you? I would, because you'd rather get ahead of it than not say nothing and let everybody else write the story for you and write your narrative. So, to me, if you got something that you want to get off your chest, you know, and obviously he does because he appealed the whole process and he was saying how the NFL was so wrong and all this, that, and the third. If I'm him, I'm going out there and I'm saying my story, exactly how I feel. and Because if you don't do that then the story's going to come out. This is what this is what happened. This is what really happened. So okay. you got to defend yourself in some regard. Um, it's not an easy thing to do out there. I know standing in front of the media after you did some crazy stuff, it's definitely not an easy thing to do. But you got to get ahead of it and at least write your own story before somebody else does. Let me tell you something. It's been five weeks. All right, that story is written. The, what, <laughs> the, best thing, the best thing that he can do is come out and – Explain that he made a mistake, he made a bad yeah. decision, yeah. and he's ready to move on from it. All right, I wouldn't be answering questions about details and X, Y, Z. Hide your brow, but yeah, but show your face in front of the camera, and that's how you get it behind you quicker. Yeah. All right, you yeah. don't speak now. Next week they still want to know. Yep. The week after that they still want to know. You play bad, they want to know. <laughs> right? Like this is you why. Ain't you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and and the way for you to get that behind you fast is to get out there in front of the cameras, take your ill. Right? Yeah, take it like a grown take man. Your, take your answer the questions the correct way. Don't answer the questions that you don't need to be answering that don't have anything to do with football. Mm-hmm. Move on and go get, out there and play well, and then everybody's going to forget about you. Because if you get in front of it, like you said, if you get in front of it now, what do we know about the NFL? Every week there's a different story. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, it was a, it was a Jaguars coach. Uh, Urban Meyer Urban was Meyer. over there. He got in front of it. Next thing you know, there's another story about did somebody he, else. He? At, least, at least he got in front of the camera. You know, at least he got in front of the camera. Oh, wait, listen, we didn't talk about him this week. Yeah. We ain't ain't nobody talking about him. Ain't nobody, because he, he, he went out there and got a dub. John, <laughs> John Gruden went out there and took him yeah, out. I said, yeah, I, 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 I said, yeah, the Ur- emails came out. Urban Meyer went out there and got a win. They forgot about the guy. John Gruden went out there and whatever, and now Rich is winning. Now ain't nobody talking about John, nobody care about John Gruden. Ain't nobody going to be talking about Leo Collins if he get, get out there and say what he need to say. Go out here, play well, and, and you fine. There'll be another story next out, week. You go out here and play like garbage, though, ah. and lose your spot to steal? All right, so, ah. so, now nah, nah, yeah. you in trouble. Now, let me ask you this. You're coming out there to tell your story. How do you tell it? Do you tell it with deep sorrow? Do you tell it with a tear in your eye? How do you tell your story? You tell your story straight up. You are you. First of all, you, you are, come out defiant. No, nah, no, nah, you, I wouldn't do that. How do you come out? <laughs> Bro, Put you, your dukes up on them, huh? All right, listen. <laughs> you make a bad decision. You make a mistake. You serve your time, and then you get to move on. Come out there. Hey, man, I don't have to feel no way for y'all, okay? Yeah. I missed five games for a mistake that I made. Cost me right? some money. All right, so I don't need to come out here and act like I'm sad for y'all. I'm excited to be back and be uh, be on the field and in the locker room with my, with my guys. Yeah, that's how you got to <laughs> yeah. approach it. Do you have a little fun at your own expense? Do you bring a briefcase? Absolutely not. Hey, guys. Nah. Nah. I'll die. <laughs> nah, I couldn't. Well, no. I don't know if he had that type. Like if he was a loony type personality, then he'd be all right with pulling that off. But see, he's he's kind of like serious when it comes Let to me the media. So I don't though. think he can the pull that off. The team is rolling. You do not need none of that. I'm not gonna play with you. <laughs> you do not. First of all, this is probably one of the most embarrassing suspensions that that have happened for Especially the Cowboys. Because the whole story you know came what I'm out with the story. You right? had two games, then you tried to bribe yeah. and appeal it, so, and they brought it back up. So honestly, five. to me, I don't think anything is funny about it. Especially for him, I, I assume that he wants to get get over and put it behind him. His family probably wants to do the same. Same thing. Don't come out here and then try to get a laugh. In my opinion, you okay. you, you your own man. Do what you want to do. But if me, I say what you got to say. Move on and go play well, and everybody forget about you. Here's one thing that Lel Collins has. 
the local media like him. Mm-hmm. And that matters in terms of when you're trying to tell your story, is having goodwill with mm-hmm. the very people who cover you and write the story. When you don't have goodwill, you end up the way Tiger Woods did when he got into his his issues. Nobody gives you the benefit of the doubt, none. He never wanted to help anybody. So at that point in time, when they could give it to him, they gave it back to him. Yeah. And I remember one time when Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had recently left the NBA and he was trying to get something done. And guys were like, no, we're not helping you. You never helped us. But Collins has that goodwill. So once he talks to people, I think the stories will be favorable in his you know, towards oh. him, and then and then it'll move I'm on because saying, people like him. Listen, I'm just telling you, he's appealing. We, I, I believe that we all, we can all agree that it sounded like he made a bad decision, tried to bribe yeah. somebody, yeah. and then just tried to stand on a mistake that he made and get it an appeal, even though we assume that it's true. He yeah. tried to bribe somebody. Don't come out here and be, what's it, uh, Jesse Smollett, okay? <laughs> don't come out here and do that. <laughs> Not like, the Smollett. Don't, don't embarrass <laughs> you. Like, that's when, 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 when you ask the question, that's where I can, like, church, church is like, yeah, come and tell your story and defend yourself. I see that type of stuff. That, that's, what, that's what runs through my mind. Like, nah, well, bro. Not the Jesse. You yeah. done had a whole day talking about, <laughs> we against these people. They, they coming after me. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, Kyrie. like you're, you're trying to cancel folks. You want to try to cancel. Like, I can see, I just see all negative stuff. Hey, bro, move on. You, five on, weeks, you already missed five weeks of, of the season. It, it might cost you a little. It might cost, <laughs> it cost you a lot, lot but it's, it's going to cost. cost you. I see. Nah, yeah. So I, I believe he's going to do it the way that I said. But if he pulls the church, I'm sure it's going to be very entertaining for a lot <laughs> you know, of people to talk it. about. Because you know they I'm love talking it. about the Cowboys on all the ESPN channels. And I don't think he wants himself to be – like that's why he wants to be talked about. Uh, yeah. He wants to be talked about for his play on the field. He better be good on the field. Come out like Nino Brown. If you come out there allowing sacks, though – I mean, he ain't going to hear the end of it. it not only to that part, but where's Steele at? Steele wouldn't have gave up that sack. He's not going to hear the end of it. He's got to play well. He's he he got to come back right. and play well. He I'm with you. Right. I, I think he'll be all right. Uh, Jerry Jones indicated on his show today that he, so if he comes out trash, he'll be he'll, he'll be starting. And, and <laughs> but if he comes out trash, y'all not going. You, you got to mm, give you got to give him a little leeway, bro. He missed five weeks. If it's, if it's, if he comes back two games and he gives up three sacks, are we are we are we talking about Steele coming back? Are we still like ah? We gonna ride with like? I'm still ride. I'm still ride. I, Cause I, I've seen I've seen both, and I and and Leo at his when he's playing well, he's he's better. Okay. <laughs> he's a better player than uh, than Steel. He's okay. right. Let's take a break. When we come back, there's something that kind of made me say hmm about this Cowboys team. Let's get dive into that next. Danny McCray, Barry Church, and we scores. This is Players Lounge, brought to you by Hotels.com on DallasCowboys.com radio. Organic pumpkin smoothies are back at Smoothie King. With at least 13 grams of protein each and five options to choose from, it's easy to find a favorite to help you reach your goals. Like the new Keto Champ Pumpkin. Packed with a whopping 23 grams of protein and nine net carbs, it's a quick and nutritious meal on the go. So order online or through the app for pickup or delivery. And power up with pumpkin and protein. Official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. Smoothie King. Rule the day. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yokiero, Yokiero guacamole. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Hi, I'm Clint Tillerson with United Ag and Turf. Before you can park yourself in front of the game, park yourself in a John Deere and power through your chores. Our Land Run package is a 1025R, 25 horsepower tractor with a loader, rotary cutter, and a box blade for $229 a month. And the price you see is the price you'll pay. No surprises. So don't miss another kickoff. Visit unitedagandturf.com. Offer ends February 1st, 2021. Restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Now let's get to work. To the Players' Lounge. B. 
Be the first to receive new offers, event info, and more when you sign up to receive text messages from the team. Text Cowboys to NFLDAL. That is 635 635- 325 to receive 10% off your next pro shop order. Message frequency may vary. Message and data rates may apply. Mm. I'm going to have you start reading these. Man. Hey, I got to do the job on Friday, so you know what I mean? Me and, me and D-Mac going to hold it down for you while you out of here. Go ahead and start. start on I'm going to start off, I'm gonna start off start on, on Friday. I'm going to start off on Friday, man. I'm gonna start you off might on be the only person who haven't done a read. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. I'm, I'm going to enjoy it's that. going to cost you a little extra. I'm going to enjoy so watching like, this. You like got black Mickey Spagnuolo on that read. <laughs> You're going to be zooming in. <laughs> Let's see why we got, okay, we got hair. It might have a finger, too. Uh-huh. Comma, yeah. period. <laughs> Y'all want them hosts? Duties. It might cost you a little extra. I'm going to go ahead and talk to the boss, man, a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Here's something that made me say, hmm, thinking about the Cowboys as they get ready to face the Minnesota Vikings Sunday night on NBC. Where does Parsons play for this game? Ooh. Knowing that they want to run the football between Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison, the Vikings have the eighth best running game in the National Football League. What do you do if you're Dan Quinn? You know what? I'm going to let this young man play linebacker. Yes. I think it's time for him to play one position and become really, really good at yes. it. And I think we're going, in order for us to be good against the run moving forward in the season, okay. he's going to have to become a better run player. And mm-hmm. the only way you can become a better run player is getting those live reps, live action. The only way. And the best way is against one of the best rushing teams in the league. Mm-hmm. Go out here and see what you got. Let him start to get the real feel for all these different type of running schemes that the uh, NFL teams run. Because I don't think he's seen those from the linebacker position yet. Uh, so I would give him most of his playing time at linebacker. Now, of course, when you get those third and longs and you need to bring some pressure, pop off yeah, yeah, let, let, him, let, him, let him rush a little bit. But I would have him mainly playing, playing linebackers, one, so he can get better at, at defending the run. 100%. You got to play him at linebacker so he can feel those reads. He can feel those pulling guards, pulling over there, what gap has to switch when that happens, if he should hammer the run, if he should spill the run. Those are only, those things are the only, you only get good at those things after repetition. And we're talking about, you know, what, what Minnesota loves to do. They love to run the ball up between the tackles. If you're a defensive end out there, if you're, if you're a Parsons on the outside, you're really not going to affect the game that much when it comes to the run game coming from the outside in. It's just, just not going to happen that way. Is he going to be able to get after the quarterback? Of course. But to me, in this game especially, you got to play him at linebacker. One, to get the feel for things, but that middle of our defense, as we saw against the Patriots at the beginning and the end, it showed a little chink in there, just a little bit, because Harris was going downhill and they were running the ball well against us up the middle. And I feel as though if Parsons would have got more reps at that linebacker position, he might have been able to play the run a little bit better. So, And especially with Tank and Dorrance Armstrong, all those guys coming back, you got guys – with pop off the edge that can get off to the quarterback. Leave him at linebacker. Let him get good. Let him develop at linebacker. And maybe for you know a third down passing situation, you sprinkle him in there and uh, each uh, sprinkle him in there at the defensive end position. But for me, you got to keep him at that linebacker. At least at least slow down Dalvin Cook in there. You, I mean, because if you let him get a head start running, I mean it's gonna be a long afternoon. You, you're also gonna need him to uh, defend screens as well. Mm-hmm. He's going he's going to be one of those guys where he's going to have to read and react and get the Dalvin Cook before he gets rolling. And yes. Playing defensive end, playing on defensive line, rushing. That is the reason why teams run screen. If I see Michael Parsons rushing and Randy Gregory rushing specifically on the same side, yeah. I'm checking to a screen route. Without a doubt. <laughs> and and that's when you're in trouble. You need your linebackers to be able to make those plays. And I think Michael Parsons could be a, a, a huge difference maker at the linebacker position uh, when it comes to stopping Dalvin Cook. If you're a Cowboy fan, you have to feel good because these are the issues that you're talking about. Hey, who's coming back to the team? How do you play? Guys, you're talking about actual football things as your team is a a three-and-a-half game lead in the East. You look at Philadelphia, man. (laughs) Fletcher Cox stepped to the podium and talked about, hey, I don't get paid to do Chase Greens. I get paid to go get sacks. I mean, the wheels are falling Hell off yeah. when a guy mm. like Fletcher Cox is coming out saying, this scheme is not aggressive and you're not taking advantage of what I do. I, I ended up listening to one of the local Philly radio stations on Monday because I just wanted the entertainment of how mad they are. <laughs> They're saying the head coach is over, in over his head. They're saying the defensive coordinator is no good. They're trying to fire the GM. They're mad oh, at the man. owner. Oh, they, they are going after <laughs> everyone. I mean, look at the offense. Terrible. You, you like we could. I'm going to bring up Miles Sanders again because this guy should be a better player. Yeah, he's literally about to get his spot taken by Gamewell because Gainwell's he can because he can get out of the backfield and run right. 
routes. That's You're not even crazy. giving this dude a chance to run the ball. This is absolutely crazy. Jalen Hurts yeah. is their leading rusher. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not like they don't have weapons on the outside. They got they some decent weapons out there on the outside. You got Goddard at tight end. Miles Sanders, who could be a legit <laughs> back in this NFL. So it ain't like they got options. They, they put money in the receivers. They, yeah, they, they, like, Jalen Rager, <laughs> they, they, they drafted guys. Yeah. For for this reason, and they cannot seem to get it get it done in the rank game mm. or the pass game. Mm. I think they've the stat was this year four guys have completed eighty percent passing against the defense for Philadelphia. You, just can't, you can't have that and win. I There's mean, no way you can have that bad they, of a secondary. They defense win. has been has been shaky for for, for a few a while. years. <laughs> for a while well, now. Well, well, and then they and then so the radio station played the. The owner talking about how he kept hearing about this defensive coordinator, and we kept hearing about it. We kept hearing, well, how do we get this guy? And so they tried to make it seem like they went out. They, they you know, they found they 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 found somebody who's going to be able to get it done and get in the lab and tear things up. And it's just like, you know, oh, he in the lab? Get, get torn up. That was, that's what they it dissected is. Dissected is. <laughs> he no, in the lab? Oh, <laughs> dissecting, dissecting is what Derek Carr did to them on Sunday. Oh yeah. 31 of 34. <laughs> Without his best receiving option, he For did this. 323 yards and a, a QBR of 77.6. He did this without Waller, without Jacobs. So Jacobs got hurt halfway his, through the game. His QB rating that day was 113. Um, and that's why I'm not worried about this division. I mean, we, I'm not worried about it. You got Philly, who's terrible. Well, Washington's you, you thought, terrible. You, you thought Philly would be bad. You know, You thought Philly would be bad. But you just didn't understand or think that they were going to be historically bad. It's bad that, right to the now. point of, I don't know if they can keep this head coach. I, I don't know if they can keep him long term. I mean, Tom Brady, uh, when he played him, 34, 42, 297, two touchdowns. That uh, wasn't QB a rainstorm. Rating, QB rating of 102. I mean, this is really bad. The wheels are falling off. And in Washington, all right, they all sold themselves that their ten million dollars of Ryan Fitzpatrick was going to allow them to go ahead and win the division. He's hurt. Taylor Heineke, who they tried to say, "Hey, look, you know, we got a really good backup who played well against Tampa in the play." He's not the answer. The defense you thought about was good. You got guys in the DB that they signed as DBs who are openly complaining about the defense. They've got problems. We all see what what's been happening in New York. Joe, mm. and Joe Judge and his issues here. You're a Cowboy fan right now. You have none of that. Nope. You're, you're talking about, hey, well, where do you play Parsons? I mean, the, the, there's no issues here, which is... So what happens when you don't have that signal caller. Look how last year we didn't have him, and all you heard was reports out of the locker room. This dude don't know how to do defense. This dude don't know this, that, and the third. Look at the other teams in the division now. Hurts ain't the guy. You got all this complaining. Washington, Fitzpatrick out. Tyler Heineke ain't getting the job done. You got guys complaining. Defense is going to shambles. New York, they just been in shambles from the jump because they never had a franchise guy with Daniel Jones. So... I mean, count our blessings with that. This, Rest this, him up. But this, this is, but this is, this goes against the argument that I made earlier. But this is why you want to go ahead and keep padding those wins, right? Because this is the NFL, and we've listed all these problems. If you list New York, you got Saquon going out, mm-hmm. Daniel Jones going out. You, you, us Judge, right now. Judge doesn't seem like he's the leader. Nah. Yeah. Well, well, us. Uh, I'm, well, just injury wise, us right now. We got to scare with Dak and his calf. You, you never know when you're going to have to have this thing where it's three or four games where you're without a certain player who mm, okay. who might cause you to lose some games. So it's best to just. Keep stacking, keep stacking up the dubs. Up. Stack up the dubs. Get it ready just in case something happens. And you know, and you need and you need some time. You need to yeah. give Dak some time to get back. He don't feel like he has to be rushed. Uh, so I don't know it's it's, it's 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 twofold. But we know it's the league. So I'm, I'm I, I don't think we're clear yet. <laughs> not clear, but right now it's looking good for the Cowboys Absolutely. in the NFC East. Since you're not the fan bases in Philadelphia, Washington, and New York aren't happy. And Philadelphia, they also deal with the Ben Simmons deal. Mm. So, so they got, I mean, it's... <laughs> Young Ben. I'm telling you, man, the, it's entertaining to listen to their radio out there, boy, because they just try to fire everybody with the Eagles. They trying to run Ben Simmons out of town. And the funny part to me is that I had a guy who, who wanted me to come on the show in Philly today. I was like, bro, who else? I mean, we saw Carson Wentz get run out of town, mm-hmm. ran out of Markel Oltz. It's like, this is all you guys do. They trying to run Ben, and you know I don't you like ran Doug how Peterson out of town. I don't like how these other these other players from other organizations are kind of piling on oh, Ben Simmons he, as well. You, yeah. you don't like do Jason that, Kelsey. yeah. Like, like you don't play better. do that. Like play better. Hold on, worry about your sport and your team. <laughs> yeah. All right, this man's over here handling his own business. I ain't like how they did that one. And I, and you know, I'm a big Doc Rivers fan. Big Doc Rivers. Noah fan. Noah Brown said Noah Brown came. He out said he came out and said something. And def- yes, Noah Brown came out and defended Ben Simmons in right, the well, Philly, Philly Philly Twitter. Jumped on him, 
Eagle Twitter jumped all on him. Who's he? No, I don't know who he is. So he was taking shots. But I understood exactly what Noah Brown was saying is, hey, man, this man is handling his business. Why are you, you worried about him? Your season is off the rails, and you want to sit around here and tell people what to do. But all of Philly got behind it. Yeah, see, see. Um, see, well, why ain't they getting after Doc Rivers for his comments after the playoff game? He the one that started this whole barbecue business. If he wouldn't have went out there talking all this, oh, I don't know if I can win with him. And then you got Embiid talking all crazy. I see why Ben was like, look, I don't want to be here. The home coach don't believe in me. Why do I want to be here? I will say this. But he ain't no, say but, nothing out of that. But Nui did, you did tell us last year that they said that Ben Simmons was was pretty lazy. He wouldn't come in and do what he needed to do to get that jumper fixed. Well, so, well, man, it was two so, sides so, to the story yeah, on so that saying, one. Okay. So if, that, if that's happening and Doc Rivers is like, he in this office looking over the court, he never see Ben Simmons in there working on the jumper. You're like, oh, this dude. Yeah. Here's, here's one thing that Ben Simmons said that, in my mind, you deserve all the booze that you are getting from the people of Philadelphia. He said, I want to go to a place where I can make mistakes. I'm sorry, you signed a max contract, Yeah, you can't do that today. <laughs> but he's been making mistakes. Right, but you signed a max contract. You signed on to be the face of the team. You talk about you want to go, what, Charlotte or Utah so you can go make mistakes and you go learn from the thing? Nah, yeah. No, no, you, you signed up for this. When you get and that max every, deal, you get max pressure. And everything it came from. By this point in his life, in his career, he knew what Philly was about. But you willingly said, nah, sign me up for some more. Give me this cash. You don't get to have it both ways. Yeah. You don't. I mean, you know what the town is, man. You guys played there. You know, you knew what you were getting when you walked into Lincoln Financial Field. Yeah, they tried to fight my granddad one day. Like, it was crazy. Like I said, <laughs> and, you told, and you told your family, you know, do you really want to wear that cowboy jersey yeah, when it come yeah, up yeah, in here? Just come on to the Dallas, Dallas game. Don't <laughs> right, worry about that Philly right. game. So, so for ben, my thing with Ben Simmons is you knew what was going on, and did you take the necessary steps to, to get better? By all accounts, nobody's out there waving the flag saying, hey, man, I mean, have you ever heard, hey, man, this dude was back here at 1 o'clock in the morning. Or, you, you never heard that. Uh-huh. You haven't heard anybody. Because he wasn't. <laughs> Even and, your friends ain't saying nothing because they know you wasn't. And, and think about it. He's an LSU guy. He's not sitting up here defending him. What does mm. that say? I'm an LSU football guy. See, uh, see now, now he's, he's a football yeah, guy. Yeah, see, it's different. I'm, different no, different, no, when different. it comes to defending people, okay, like right. I, I'm, uh, I was def- a part of the football program. But, but you, but, but but you, you would defend Jabril Cox? Defend who? You would defend Shaq, though, right? What about what? Anything. What did I defend him for? I said, for anything, you would defend I, Shaq. I don't know Shaq. <laughs> would you defend Jabril Cox? Yeah. LSU? Yeah. Okay. But you won't defend Ben Simmons? Jabril Cox played football. For a year. Said, ben Simmons was there for a did, year. Did he play? Who? Football. Ben, uh, ben Jabril, Simmons ain't so, so you, Oh, you're just a foot, LSU I, football. No, no, no. When, when it comes to def- – like, I love my entire thought, program, yeah, the entire LSU. school. But – I know about the football program. I don't know nothing about what basketball got going on because I did watch oh, the movie yes, you, that you got me you to do. watch. Yo, you you right, LSU right. Oh, coach was on there talking crazy. I don't oh, know do. nothing about the basketball program. Right, right. When I told you to watch, uh, it was a dude that had the little ring about getting the college kids to go to certain, uh, oh, certain places. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I know and what they got about. LSU coach on, on, on we'll tape. Wait. We'll, we'll wait. wait on I, made, I made him a strong blank offer. So. Yeah, so I'm saying. See, I don't know. I, I, I don't can't know defend. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. All right, let's uh, let's wrap this. We'll do this tomorrow. Dive let's more into it. the Vikings and the Cowboys. Get you ready for Sunday Night Football. Barry Church, Danny McRae. Tomorrow, oh, by the way, it's Survivor Night. Danny's Bring on Survivor, CBS, 7 o'clock. It's your team, team Danny Burst here. I'm Louis Scruggs. We will chat tomorrow, 1230 Central. Mix shots coming up at the bottom of the hour right here on the Dallas Cowboys. Radio Network. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!